We are now in Banff. We have traveled 15 miles from Canmore. The first settlements in Banff was in 1880s after the Transcontinental Railway was built through the Bow Valley. This town was named Banff after Banffshire, Scotland, the birthplace of two of the original directors of the Canadian Pacific Railways. This churning melee of white water is Bow Falls. The waterfall here is wide, but the drop is very short, just 30 feet at its highest point. And it got its name from the Cree Native American name, Manashaban Sipi, literally meaning the place from which bows are taken. Their bows were made from the wood of the Douglas fir that grows on the banks of this river. Nestled in this picturesque valley is the Fairmont Banff Springs Hotel, also known as the Castle in the Rockies. There are stories that this hotel is haunted. We are now in the Cascade of Time Gardens, beautifully terraced with pathways and rock steps leading through trees and flower beds. This is the iconic view seen on many postcards looking down Banff Avenue towards the Cascade Mountain, towering at the end of it. This site was originally the home of the Brett Sanatorium and Hotel built in the 1880s. But when the hotel burned down in 1930s, Parks Canada took over this plot of land and built the administration building that you see here and the gardens in 1935. This building has interactive exhibits about Canada's land and people. This garden has approximately 50,000 flowers planted over 12 acres of land. We are now walking towards the Cambrian Pavilion, one of the very first features in this planned walk through the gardens. But this informal and rustic structure was constructed using local building materials uh, representing the primordial era one of the geological eras during which the Rocky Mountains were formed. The surrounding pools were also built of local rocks. The water features throughout the gardens were intended to depict nice, the geological sequence of time. That's where they get the namesake, Cascade of Time's Gardens, and the water is cascading through time. There are several pavilions and gazebos that makes this place so great to sit and take in all the beauty of this area. This orange structure that is ahead of us is actually made from tree trunks with burls. Burl is a tree growth in which the grain has grown in a deformed manner. It can be caused by stress connected to an injury, virus, or fungus of the tree. Our next stop is Cave and Basin National Historic Site, the birthplace of Canada's national parks. Canada now has 43 national parks and the largest system of protected places in the world. Oh, we are just having a game start. Well, the car. This area with its thermal waters has been significant and sacred to the First Nations peoples for millennia, where healing was sought and medicines were gathered. This mural depicts the use of the cave by the stony Nakoda people. 
the elders came here as a pilgrimage and climbed down the hole for they believed in the healing powers of the bubbling warm water that flowed from the base of the sulfur mountain to them the sound of running waters represented the flow of life itself the cave and basin is just one of the nine sulfurous hot springs around these mountains and the only one that has a cavern large enough to walk in this artificial tunnel was put through to the cavern in 1886 the sulfur smell here is quite strong the water is heated by geothermal activity from the depth of several kilometers within the ground and in these warm waters live the banff snail classified as endangered and is found nowhere else in the world in 1880s a couple of railway workers stumbled upon this cave when they descended through this original vent hole in 1885 the canadian government set up the cave and basin and called it the banff hot springs reserve a bridge was put over the bow river and the town and hotels were constructed and a naturally heated swimming pool was opened to the public and then this whole area expanded officially becoming the rocky mountains national parks In this interactive display room these giant HD 4 screen visuals leads us on a journey across the country We are now driving towards Lake Minnewanka, a large glacial-fed lake that is 13 miles long and 466 feet in depth. Every lake in the Rockies has its own character, its own story, and the story of Lake Minnewanka goes back to 10,000 years when the aboriginals inhabited its banks and called it Minwaki or the Lake of Spirits because they respected and feared the lake for its resident spirits. Early European settlers later named it Devil's Lake. breaking for lunch and enjoying the exhilarating scenery of lake with mount inglis maldi and fair home ranges as the backdrop in 1912 a summer village called minwanka landing was built here this town site consisted of four avenues and three streets there were hotels wharves restaurants and sailing tours aboard two cruise boats several dams have been built over the years for hydroelectric power generation and the most recent dam built in 1941 raised the lake 98 feet and submerged the resort village of Minnewanka Landing the submerged village original dam and the bridge pilings make for an amazing underwater exploration in these waters during the winter 
when the atmospheric conditions align Lake Minnewanka is one of the best places in Banff National Park to view the northern lights Aurora Borealis that's the boat tour Lake Minnewanka is the only lake in Banff National Park to allow limited use of power boats and scenic boat cruises go out daily to Devil's Cap with an interpretive tour guide Cook out here. Hi. Thank you so much for the lovely tea over there. Oh, wow. Such a hospitable group of people. <laughs> They're having their uh, Nepali get together. US and Canada. What's your name? My name is Padam. Padam? Yes. Oh. Wow. Breathtaking mountains and emerald green waters. The lakes in the mountains have vivid blue and green colors because they are glacier fed. As the melt water from the glacier starts to flow, it carries with it glacier silt that makes the water this color. Banff National Park has in excess of 1000 glaciers and the heavier glaciation and softer rock makes the Canadian Rockies much more easily carved by ice and gives them their distinct shapes. The Canadian Rocky Mountains were formed when the North American continent was dragged westward during the closure of an ocean basin off the west coast and collided with a microcontinent over 100 million years ago. upper hot springs since there was no bathing allowed at the cave and basin we are heading to the uh, banff upper hot springs to soak in the steamy hot mineral waters like gourmet blends of coffee hot springs waters feature a signature mix and each rocky mountain hot spring has its own unique blend of materials gases and temperature the top 5 minerals found in the Banff Upper Hot Springs are sulfate, calcium, bicarbonate, magnesium and sodium. Banff's only East Indian restaurant and the food was terrific. All right, so our Indian food, we have uh, gobi masala, gobi alu gobi, and bengan batta, bindi, garlic naan, Emma's having coconut naan, which is excellent, also coconut stuff. So, food's very good here. We have now arrived at our hotel for the night, located at the summit of the famous Kicking Horse Pass in Yoho National Park. Great Divide Lodge, room number 12. Occupied. They have like a small bed, but the view, that's the view from here. There's a train. Come on, look at this train. Okay.